This is the Made for Living Well podcast, hosted by Alexa Sherm, the place to create a life well lived. Welcome back to Made for Living Well. My name's Alexa, and we are continuing our podcast series in health school. Specifically today, we're continuing to talk about the nervous system which is what we talked about in the previous podcast and really how it's all linked to everything else we're going to talk about in this series. I've mentioned this before, but all the podcasts do build off of each other. So these podcasts are going to be important in understanding what's coming up later this summer. And likewise, you'll understand today's podcast better if you listen to the previous podcast. Now, of course, you don't have to. That's just a suggestion. But regardless... I am super excited to bring you today's podcast, which is one of my all-time favorite topics. Considering I'm a mindset nutritionist, which really just means I emphasize the importance in your thoughts and your beliefs and how that's impacting your biology. Now, just to give you a brief recap of the previous lesson, we discussed what the nervous system is, which is just one large communication channel that's taking in information both externally and internally to determine your level of safety or what nervous system state your body is going to live within. Now, like all things in your body, this should and will always be changing. There's nothing static about the nervous system. Like energy, it's always in motion and it loves to stay in motion. In fact, flip-flopping between states is not wrong. It's part of living life, and really, it makes up what we consider an abundant life. We are going to experience times of stress, times of joy, times of pain, times of pleasure. The full range of emotions makes up the human existence, and really experiencing them makes up the fulfillment of life. Problems exist not because we experience all of them, but oftentimes because we avoid them or we get stuck in certain phases and it prevents us from experiencing the range of emotions and the range of a life. And getting stuck in one specific state, which is often getting stuck in a state of stress, is what makes life small. It makes life scarce. It's hard to see outside of yourself. And really, it's hard to embrace all of the things that make up life, that make living worth living. And part of this is due to the biological spiral or the biological patterns that we tend to exist within. As we mentioned in the previous podcast, most of life is built through patterns or cycles. One thing is influencing another thing, and that's re-influencing the previous thing, and it's all working together. And that's why I always say all healing happens in the same way. If you heal one area, you're healing a multitude of different areas, especially if you focus on what your body needs to thrive. And that is our job. We are the ones who are enabling our body to thrive by learning how to support our body. Our body's job is to keep us alive. And if we don't learn to support our body, if we're just constantly working to change it, we'll probably stay stuck in a state of survival. Again, we can exist there, but we don't really live there. And my full argument for being in the health space is always and only to help you live. Now, as we've talked about this and as we build on previous podcasts, even the self-identity podcast, that's going to come more into play in this podcast dedicated to how your mindset, your soul, is ultimately influencing your nervous system. Now, there are two critical elements that your nervous system is looking for in order to truly thrive and that is safety and movement. Whenever we see a lack of safety, our nervous system is always going to move more into the states of stress, and when prolonged, it can even move into the state of immobilization. This is where people get stuck in kind of this free state where we burn out and we don't have a lot of drive for life. You get stuck in these periods of pain, of loneliness, of nothingness, of anxiety, of worry, depression, You get stuck just feeling like life is worthless, purposeless. And I say all this because I also know this. I'm a recovering pain addict. And so there's been points in my life where I found my pattern to be and exist within a state of pain 
all the time. Even when things were happy, I was pulling it back into that state of pain, into that state of stress, where it was really never allowing my body to fully rest and absorb all that life had to offer. And our mind is a really powerful tool when it comes to our nervous system. Yes, in some ways, we have to first biologically nourish ourselves so that we can change those patterns, but the patterns of our beliefs, of what we think, of the stories we tell ourselves are single-handedly the most influential pattern of what state of our nervous system we're living out of. And what's interesting about these is a lot of times these aren't even our beliefs. They're not even our stories, but they were the stories of other people threw upon us to carry around. What I'm trying to say is much of the story you live within and much of the existence of your nervous system was actually developed in your childhood. It was developed out of things that happened to you and the stories that you generated behind those things or you were told to believe that has led to the story you've told yourself up until this point. And that story creates your perceptions changing your nervous system response. Let me just give you a basic example as it relates to health, but this goes in all areas of life. It could be love, it could be your spiritual aspect, like there's so many aspects that this influences, and we know trauma has a massive influence in the full perspective of our life, and that always is going to change your biology. But again, a basic example is just going back to food beliefs. Now, a lot of people's food beliefs are actually not their beliefs. They might be partially your beliefs or what you've learned since adulthood. But a lot of times, these underlying beliefs were developed in childhood. The beliefs about food and what food meant for your body were built based on what your mom and your grandma and your dad said about food and the way they interacted with food and how they ate food. That has influenced you in more ways than we probably give it credit, and it started to shape or transition into what you believe. In many cases, there's been a stacking or a layering of beliefs on top of beliefs on top of beliefs, which really lead to a lot of confusion. Like, we want to believe this, but we're still stuck believing this, and we can't quite figure out what is the most logical belief. And when we find ourselves here, we're most often always go back to the oldest belief or what's considered the firmest belief because that was what was integrated into us in childhood when we didn't have enough logic to question if that were true. So what I'm trying to say is a lot of people are living out their health in the exact same pattern that their parents lived out of. Not necessarily because you want to, but that's what happens when we don't learn how to repattern or reprogram our nervous system to respond in health. We repeat old loops. It's safety. Safety is always going back to the old pattern, the one that might not be the healthiest, but as long as it's kept you safe, you will continuously repeat it when you feel unsafe. And unsafe could come in the form of even changing the things that you want in the healthy direction, but like all change, it can make you feel relatively uncertain leaving you running back to those old patterns. Now, of course, that's pretty complicated, right? But it sums up the whole picture. Your beliefs are influencing how you perceive all of life. Even the smells that you take in or the taste, like there's nostalgia, and some of them can ignite memories of trauma or pain or things that you want to forget, but your biology refuses to forget because it can't in order to protect you from experiencing that pain again. All of this, no matter how much you don't like it, all of it is done in survival. And that part of you, the part of you that wants to protect you, is never going to change, which opens the door to question, then what is? If we continuously live out of our past, how then do we move forward? Well, here's the thing. If we go back to the two main needs of the nervous system, safety and movement, we can start to recognize how we change from those two things. And we're going to start with movement. I know it's the second thing, but sometimes it's the first step of action that we need to take in order to alter our beliefs. Because if something's stuck, 
If something's stuck inside of you, it's filling you up. And oftentimes we only have so much room to take things in. And some of us are so full and congested on old things that no matter how much information we're trying to learn and take in and what we're trying to alter, it's not working because there's no room for it to take hold. It's the same thing with emotions, right? It's really, really hard to experience love when your root of bitterness and resentment or even shame is so deep in your life that there's no room to grow love. So we have to see that sometimes the best place to start healing is to just move old things, is to just understand old beliefs, understand old patterns, and learn the process of letting go. Now, when I went through my own healing journey, this was probably one of the most influential things that I learned, but it was also the thing that I tended to neglect the most because it felt too good to be true. Like it felt too easy to work. Talk about old beliefs coming back up, right? If it's not pain, there's no pain, there's no gain. All of those old faulty beliefs that aren't true really tried to get me to derail from understanding that in most cases, the best thing that I could do was to let things go. But again, this is difficult because we hold on to things to keep us safe. So there has to be an element of nourishment or safety already established inside your biology in order for you to even begin to process the things that you need to start to let go of or to begin the act of freeing yourself from holding on to all these things that are taking your energy and pushing you back into old patterns that you really want to stop. And the first step to letting go is honestly just acknowledging It's acknowledging what you feel and sometimes even acknowledging the things that you've been through or the stories that you've existed within. If we go back to food beliefs, it might even be acknowledging like, I realized my mom had nothing good to say about food or her body. And it's recognizing, it's acknowledging some of these old beliefs and where these old patterns came from. And then it's putting truth back into it saying, but just because she believed that does not mean that has to be my belief. Just because she told me my body was wrong does not mean that's true. When we look at the scope of changing your mind, which is ultimately going to influence your nervous system, it really comes back to the stories you tell yourself and the stories you've learned Because everything that you're taking in is taking shape as a detail that you can put into the existing story, the story that you already live out. It's why two people can live in the exact same environment and twist their perspective of the reality so that it fits in line with their story. Your story is your reality, even if it's not the reality which means it's vital for you to understand that story. And in the process of understanding that story, you can start to understand what areas and what places of your story are actually hurting you more than they're helping you. And if they're hurting you, it's nothing more than starting to release some of those and starting to say, that wasn't mine to hold. That's what someone else told me was true. I know I thought that was true, but that's no longer true for me. In essence, this is a form of reframing. It's not diminishing or ignoring or pretending like it didn't happen, but it's reframing what you believed about what happened. And if I could say anything, reframing is one of the highest forms of healing that you have as a tool to use. We are always capable of reframing stories, but that means acknowledging the story. And this is hard because a lot of our protection and forms of survival are to prevent you from feeling pain. And so instead of feeling it, we tend to numb it or suppress it or run away from it. Or even when you try to go to feel it, you'll convince yourself that you don't really want to reopen that wound, that that is in the past, even though you're most likely still living out of the past. We all are if we haven't changed the story. We all are living out of the past, Because the past creates the stored memories that our nervous system exists within. And we can change that only by changing the story, not escaping it altogether. 
So we have to start to reframe these stories. And in the process of reframing these stories, we start to let go of the stories that hold us back, the stories that make us act in safety, the stories that make us act in self-hate. Because really, we don't have as much control as we think we do. We have choices, but choices are different than control. You have the choice to change your story, and changing that influences the multitude of how your nervous system responds. Again, it's the movement, it's the release, it's the letting go, which is going to help you reestablish a new nervous system pattern. And then, of course, we also need to move into safety. While these go hand in hand, sometimes the best place to start is, again, to release it. Now, we talked a lot about safety in the last lesson, that we have to provide nourishment in order for our body to feel safe. We have to provide rest and minerals, all the tools our body needs so that it can do the job it was designed. But when it comes to the mindset aspect of that, we also need to provide mental safety and we need to provide soul safety. And this comes back to the deepest part of us or what it is that we really believe about life. Honestly, so many of us are trying to find safety within ourselves, but we as humans are not that safe. And that's why we are all reaching for something more. Much of our safety is actually going to be found in things outside of ourselves. That's why we put so much emphasis into relationships or why relationships can hurt so badly when they go so wrong. Because we, by ourselves in isolation, are not safe. We understand, at least our biology does, that our deepest need is to be interconnected and also that we're dependent upon other things to help supply our safety. Now, as a Christian, this is where God comes into the picture because I think God writes an ultimate story for our life that is founded in the ultimate need of safety, the eternal hope of heaven. No matter how the story begins, it all ends in the same place, and that is hope. Now, I'm not going to get into too many details in this podcast. We'll have a faith-based podcast later on about establishing safety inside your faith, which sounds really basic, but I think we all kind of stumble around in that area because we're led to believe that safety is found within ourselves, but it's really not. Yes, we can supply safety based on supplying basic needs, but it also comes back to the safety of what you believe. And that is critically important because what you believe essentially rewrites the story that you just released. It helps you make sense of the things that haven't made sense, and it helps you to see things in a positive way, no matter how negative and hurtful and painful they were. And how you perceive life the mental side of health is equally as important to your nervous system response because how you think about things is going to change how your nervous system fires, whether in safety or insecurity and threats or peace and harmony and how your nervous system responds, even to stress is going to change what your body does with it. And here's the thing. Again, stress is not bad. That's part of living. Going through hard things is part of existing. And not only that, but it makes for a more fulfilling life. As they say, some of the happiest people are often the ones who've experienced the deepest levels of pain. Because how do we know what happiness without understanding what pain is? It's not about escaping emotions, but it's about having the right perspective, which again comes back to the foundational beliefs of who you are and what you believe in. When I come back to understanding beliefs and the importance of reframing your perspective to change your nervous system, I always come back to Viktor Frankl, who wrote one of the most popular books of all time called Man's Search for Meaning. And just to give you a brief synopsis, he was a Holocaust survivor. And part of his surviving the Holocaust was learning how to reframe his perspective of living within the worst case scenario that any human could imagine and coming out the other side to fully live life. And he sets inside the book, which I think is a really great quote, everything can be taken from a man. Again, there's no control. But one thing, the last of the human freedoms 
is to choose one's attitude in any given set of circumstances, to choose one's own way. And that sums up the nervous system so well. No matter what the circumstance is, our job is not to control life because we ultimately have no control of life, but it's to make the choice to choose our attitude or to choose our perspective, which completely changes the entire response of our biology and thus the actions that we take and the outcome that we experience. And the thing about this is if we fail to understand this, we will always repeat patterns, almost always patterns of safety out of the places that we hate and want to escape. But unless we start to choose our attitudes and our perspectives, unless we choose to change the story of those things, we will always repeat them because that's how the biology works to keep you safe, to keep you from experiencing it again. Things don't just disappear, and time does not heal all wounds. Your attitude and your perspective and where you find your hope and your beliefs, that is what changes the game. And when it comes to your biology, it is critically important in how your cells work and the experience that you live out. And I know we just went really deep with that quote, but to even come back to food beliefs, what you believe about food your mindset perspective about why you eat and what you think about your body and food when you eat it is changing how your body responds because that's changing your nervous system. If you're eating in an unsafe place or you feel unsafe in your body, no matter how many right things you do, your body more than likely will not respond in the way that you want it to. It's going to respond in protection and conservation and scarcity It's going to make your world smaller rather than abundance, energy, flow, vibrancy, really life that allows you to see bigger things. And that's what it means to live. And I think that's what we're all looking for, to expand our view of life and really create new patterns. And so if I had to give you a few things that can help you with this process, again, it's one nourishing your biology, because that is going to create safety that is going to help you to go back and start to reframe your stories. And maybe it doesn't start with the things in your past. You might need help to do that. And going to therapy or counseling is really vital. But it could also just be reframing today, reframing the things that you think about food, reframing how you view your body, reframing the situation that happened at work reframing your relationships. Work on reframing what it is that you think because that's changing your nervous system. And then another practice you can do when you feel like you're living in overwhelm or you feel really stuck in your patterns, like you're just existing in the survival mode, one really basic actionable step is to orient your nervous system, which means to really kind of get outside your mind for a minute and just look around you. Like, look around at the things in your current reality. I see a water bottle. Oh, the plants are really budding out. I see green grass. What do you smell? What do you feel? What do you need? Start to pay attention to the things right in front of you. And that can help you to escape the cycle of worry and re-enter reality, which then can be kind of a reset to help regain control over those patterns. And the last thing I can tell you is not only learning to let go, but learning how to stop piling things on yourself. And this is often what happens with anxiety is anxiety is not always a problem. It's the anxiety about the anxiety. It's feeling angry about feeling sad, right? Like it's it's the things that we add on to our existing problems. And we're really good about piling things on our body when we don't know what to do. We'll seek control in the areas that we don't really have control, and we'll try to find safety in things that really can't give us safety. Again, the only thing that can really provide that safety is having beliefs greater than yourself and learning how to change the story you tell yourself. It's changing your perspectives. And sometimes that means we need to let go of the idea that there's a perfect solution out there. 
There's not a pill that's going to fix your problems. There's not a supplement that's going to help you deal with the issues that plague you. Like, yes, those things can help support you, but we can't neglect that sometimes adding to those things when we think we have a problem is only amplifying the problem. We have to be really careful about how we engage with health. Is it to fix our problems or is it to nourish our whole? And that mindset and motivation is very different. And it's going to change how your body responds. All of that to say is sometimes we worry about things and we make things a bigger deal when really our body just needs space to deal with them. And when we add things on, it's like adding luggage to our body where it's like, I'm already trying to deal with this and now you're making me carry more things around and I can't. I know I experienced this in my own health journey, not only worrying about what was, but then I went in search of all of these things to like, how do I kill mold? How do I get rid of mold? How do I avoid mold? Like it became a control aspect. And in the process of control, I was just adding more and more and more. And my body was just freaking out more and more and more. I think in the health space, we find ourselves here of like, I'm trying to be healthy, but my body will not calm down. And maybe it can't calm down because it's just so congested in what it's trying to carry. Even if it's the healthiest of ideas, sometimes your body just needs space. Space to say like, okay, I'm dealing with this, but I don't need to make it worse by adding things on or worrying about it or speaking it over myself. Sometimes I just need to let it be, acknowledge it and let it be. And I know that's all easier said than done, but... I think this is a process and it just starts in the small ways of reframing situations, reframing stories, getting back into your beliefs, digging in to the Bible, to who God was, to who he made you, to what eternity even means. And then again, constantly orienting yourself back to your present reality. The nervous system is a really big deal. In fact, in the next podcast, as we talk about and we enter into kind of the world of hormones, we're going to talk about how your nervous system is controlling your hormones. And that's why I said in the previous podcast, you have a hormonal problem, you actually have a nervous system problem, which really means you have probably a safety or a movement issue that's going on inside your biology. We're going to talk more about that in the next podcast. But for now, if you want to learn more about today's podcast and about reframing your mind and the stories that you tell yourself, head on over to thelivingwell.com backslash 239 to learn more. And as always, if you're struggling with food beliefs, giving food too much power than it has and being consumed with your health, inside that blog post, I have a free mini lesson on changing your beliefs about food to create food freedom. Really, it's talking about breaking up with food because it does not have the power you think it does and putting it back in its intended place so you can move into a state of thriving. Again, you can get all of that on the blog post for today's podcast at thelivingwell.com backslash 239. For now, I would love to know what you're thinking, how you're feeling about this. Make sure you follow me on Instagram for clips from today's podcast and leave a comment to let me know. You can also follow me at The Weekly Fill, my newsletter, where we're going to be more in touch about putting this into practical application. I can't wait to hear from you and what you're loving about health school. In the next podcast, we're diving into hormones before we have an expert coming on to talk specifically about hormones as you age. Okay, I'll see you back here in the next podcast. <laughs>